Well, well. Look who's inside again. What's up, strugglers? Here's one that cannot possibly be jacked. <laughs> this is a tale of anticipation and glee followed by disappointment and embarrassment. It's the story of one of the times I was on Jimmy Fallon. It's the story of the time I was a local celebrity until I wasn't. This is the story of Subway's Subs Across America Super Bowl ad campaign. Let's have some fun with this one. I used to absolutely love watching Jimmy Fallon's show when I was in high school. And I'm not talking about the Tonight Show, this is before that. I'm talking about Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. As far as I'm concerned, late night shows are almost unwatchable nowadays. It feels like so much of their time is put towards chastising politicians and like passive aggressive negativity. It's just a slow drip that poisons your attitude. Think about this. When was the last time you watched a late night show and felt joy. I'm not talking about just a segment on YouTube or a single interview with an actor you like or whatever. A full episode of a late night talk show. There's a good chance you haven't done that in years or ever, depending on your age. And I think that's too bad because for me, that was pretty much every weeknight from 2009 to 2014. At 11.35 p.m. I would flip over to NBC, 11.35 by the way, Way too late for me to be starting an hour long show on a school night. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know how much of a rebel I was in high school. But I would always turn on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon and it filled me with joy. The childlike energy and humor of Jimmy. The absolute perfect comedic timing of his sidekick Higgins. The incredible musical talent of The Roots. And the huge variety of segments meant that no matter what, I could expect to enjoy the show on any given night. Was it perfect? Charles Stanton Charles. Devil No, of course not. <laughs> but for me personally, the show hit way more often than it missed. I loved the music parodies. I loved the absurd sketches that they would do. I loved the running gags. And here's the thing. I loved Jimmy Fallon as a host. So many people have this blood boiling hatred for how fake that they perceive him to be. And maybe he is. He interrupts when he doesn't need to interrupt. He laughs at everything and his mind is just blown by the most mundane things. But none of that ever really bothered me. I, I saw a charm in it. The way that I usually think about it is, if you see a clip from a full show, you just see a clip online, if it's just a little bit cringe, it's gonna seem a lot a bit cringe. Because the context that you're watching it in is nowhere near the context that it was meant to be watched in, right? You could be scrolling through Facebook and see a post about a close friend of yours that got in a car accident. And then you scroll again and you see this goofball political take from your kooky aunt. And then you scroll again and you see Jimmy Fallon dancing in a wig, all within the span of like a minute. How can your brain possibly properly feel all of those emotions independent from one another? It's like you got a pot of soup and you're just throwing literally anything that you can see within grasp. You're just throwing it all into the soup. The soup's not gonna taste good. It's gonna taste like all this random stuff that you threw into it. That's how soup works. That's why I got so much enjoyment out of just sitting on the couch, no distractions from Twitter, no distractions from TikTok or anything like that, and just watching the show in its entirety, start to finish. It's a different experience than so many of us even get the chance to have anymore. Now it's like bang, 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 bang. Boredom is a crime. Right? <laughs> All that being said, that's why I was so unbelievably excited in 2012 when Jimmy Fallon came on TV and said that they were gonna be working on a project for the Super Bowl and I could be a part of it. So in January of that year, Jimmy announced that Late Night was gonna be teaming up with Subway to make a commercial for the Super Bowl. What they wanted to do was get one person from each of the 50 states standing in front of some kind of landmark to identify the state that you're in, and then you would catch a Subway sandwich, a foot long, from the left side of the screen, and you'd throw it off to the right side of the screen. Then they would edit it all together and make it look like we passed a sandwich all across the country. Kind of a fun idea, right? Well, after hearing that, being the timid loser that I am, I kept thinking, there's no reason to send in a video. Probably a hundred other people from North Dakota have also been watching this show and they've already sent one in and they're definitely better than whatever I could come up with. So I didn't bother. And then a few days later on the show, they brought up a map of the states that hadn't submitted a video yet. Guess what? North Dakota hadn't submitted a video yet. So now I'm feeling like an absolute Idiot. If I would have just sent one in, I would have been on the show. What a moron I was! Well, now I was in a pickle. Because I'm watching the show, seeing that nobody from North Dakota had sent a video in, 
And now I'm thinking, I can't be the only one that's watching the show tonight. And now a bunch of other people have seen, oh my goodness, nobody from North Dakota has sent a video in? I must send one in now. So I'm worried that although nobody had sent one in the last time I was worried about it, this time there's definitely gonna be a lot of people sending videos in, so it's not worth my time. So I didn't send a video in. And then a few days later on the show, they brought up a map of the states that hadn't submitted a video yet. Guess what? North Dakota hadn't submitted a video yet, and I was prepared to play this game of will they, won't they for the rest of my life, all right? But then my parents finally stepped in and they were like, what are you, wake up, what are you doing? So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And then the next day at school, all I could think about was sending in this video. It must've been the longest seven hours of my 15 year old life. And lucky me, I had a basketball game after school. So I had to wait until that was over until I could go and film the video. And I'm, you know, you know, I'm me. I'm not a very good ball handler. So I'm, I'm playing defense. Boxing out, you know, getting boards, making strong passes. Every now and then you post up at the three point line and bingo. Okay, why am I talking about basketball? <laughs> at this point, my whole family was involved with this video. Okay, they were all hyped to do it. So when the game was over, we drove to the nearest subway to get a sandwich that we could toss around, but then we ran into the issue of, okay, what the hell landmark are we gonna use to identify that we're in North Dakota? We're sitting in a car in Fargo. There's like two recognizable things in the entire state. One of them is a giant cow statue, and that's about three and a half hours away. And the other one is Mount Rushmore. The only problem with that is Mount Rushmore is in South Dakota, not North Dakota you geographically illiterate fool. We needed to find something close by that would represent North Dakota. Tough, but here's what we came up with. First we went to the Fargo Dome, which is where the North Dakota State buys and play football. It's pretty North Dakotan, right? Phil Hansen, Carson Wentz, Joe Mays, absolute legends. Okay, do it again. We also went to the Fargo Theater, mainly just because it has pretty lights that light up at night. Okay, Dad. Because you only got about a foot to the edge. Oh, it was too soon. Show me when. Go. Go. <laughs> we stopped at this place called Nodak, which sells like appliances, I guess, I don't really know what they sell, but they had this light up sign out front and it showed the temperature and it was just insanely cold that night. And I thought, you know, that's kind of a good representation of our lovely state, negative 20 in the winter, 100 plus degrees in the summer. You filming? Okay, here we go, coming, Greg, coming at you. It was there the whole time, pretty much. It is worth noting, this is no longer a Nodak. It's a, it's a place called Carl's. So um, I guess RIP Nodak. So at this point we thought, you know, that's probably as good as we can do. It's pitch black out. We can't really find anything else around here that can represent North Dakota other than like a wheat field. And it's the middle of winter. So that's not gonna happen. Maybe we could go to the wood chipper from the movie Fargo, but it was 10 o'clock at night. It was dark out and all we had was this freaking Sony handy cam. So it's not like you were gonna be able to see it in the dark anyway. So we figured we'll, we'll pass on that. Also, that movie doesn't even take place in North Dakota. It's based in Minnesota. You geographically illiterate fool. Where else could we even go? Bonanzaville, USA. No. Not again. <laughs> so we decided to just call it a night and drive home, hoping we had enough footage. But on the way back, my dad had another idea. There are these billboards that are spread out all across the state that say, North Dakota, the rush hour commute. And then it's just a picture of a wide open road. Uh, pretty charming, not really advertising anything, just kind of showing how, you know, quiet of a life, how privileged of a life we tend to live here. Um, at least that's what it used to say. Uh, I don't know when they changed it to this. I just saw the billboard. It's like. It's like literally within the last like couple of weeks, they must have come through and changed this because that billboard had been here for 10 years. And then of course, when I need to film a video, they switch it to something else. <laughs> anyway, we shot a video there, packed up, and then finally just went home. You're gonna have to do it again. Okay, I started it. This is kind of a good spot. Yep. <laughs> Hearing a thump on the ground was funny. <laughs> we figured that one was a long shot anyway, because it's just a 
billboard. But the more submissions we made, the more likely we were to be on the show. That, that was our thought process at least. So I got home, uploaded all the clips to the late night website, and then I waited in absolute agony for two whole weeks. As you know, I watched Jimmy Fallon pretty much every single night. So there I was, all 130 pounds of me, just waiting for an update. Maybe they mention that the submissions have closed. Maybe they bring up that map again that they love to show so much and say that all the states have submitted anything. Two weeks went by with nothing. No update, no mention of the project, nothing. You know that feeling when you take a really big test in school and the teacher refuses to tell you if they've even started grading it and the nerves and anticipation are just eating you alive? No. You didn't have irrational anxiety about grades and you realize that that really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things? Good for you, nerd. I was about ready to explode waiting for news on this subway project. And then, on a Tuesday night, just as they were about to play him off, Jimmy Fallon said that they would be premiering the final product of Subs Across America the following night. And I just about shat my pants. Back in 2017, I ran a marathon and I told nobody that I was gonna do it other than my family. I hadn't trained for it at all. And I figured if for any reason I'm not able to finish this race, it's gonna be really embarrassing that people know I'm doing it and not able to complete it, right? Side note, I did finish it. And if you haven't seen my videos about that, I highly recommend you checking them out. But this was no different than that. I didn't tell anybody that I submitted a clip for this segment because if they didn't end up using it, I would have been humiliated. So my family and I sat there in the living room on February 1st and watched the premiere of Subs Across America with no idea if I was gonna be in it or not. Here it is, the world premiere of Subs Across America. Check it out. They're not, gonna, they're not using it. Why would they use it? They would never use my clip. American American I feel like such a beast. I feel like so stupid. So with each other. They're never going to use it. Why would they use our clip? Guys, they're not going to use it. They hate me. Jimmy Fallon hates me. And my brother Greg, but more importantly, that was me! And they used the freaking billboard shot. <laughs> of all of the clips. I don't care, I was on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. On national TV! And I'm gonna be on a Super Bowl ad! This night couldn't get any better! Okay, so at this point, I just had to gather my composure. I just saw myself on my favorite show, on national television. It was tiny, and it went by so fast you could hardly tell it happened. That's what she said. But I was there. Obviously I'm a celebrity now, right? NBC's gonna invite me to come to the Olympics and do some commentary over the, over the track and field events or something. Now that it wasn't a question if I was gonna be in the segment or not, I felt comfortable bragging to literally everybody I knew. I walk into school the next day like I've got the most comically large Johnson you've ever seen in your life. Confidence on 11. No big deal, I was on Jimmy Fallon last night. Gonna be on during the Super Bowl too. <laughs> Everyone's losing their marbles like, oh shit! Scotty hit the big time, I'm friends with the celebrity. The news spread to the teachers and then to the principal who sent out a mass email with the link to the video to everybody in school and then said, hey, watch out, the Kramer kids are gonna be on during the big game. It was honestly exhilarating. And then the Super Bowl happened. It's a phenomenal matchup. Patriots versus the Giants, the greatest of all time versus Tom Brady, Aaron Hernandez absolutely killing out there, Manning to Manningham, one of the clutchest plays of the entire season, Bengal, where are you at my guy, let's go! Um, the game is kind of winding down now though, haven't seen my commercial yet, come to think of it I haven't even heard a mention of Subway all day. Just to talk a big $5 foot long bow. Okay, here we go.
It must be coming up soon. And the New York Giants are the Super Bowl champs. Huh. So it was right about then, then being as the game literally ended, that I figured, yeah, maybe it's not worth it to show a three minute long song during a commercial break of the Super Bowl. One 30 second spot cost three and a half million dollars. So that would have added up to 21 million to show Jimmy Fallon singing about sandwiches. Thinking back, I don't actually remember them ever saying that the song was gonna play during the Super Bowl. I think that was just an assumption I had because it was like a Super Bowl project. So, oops, I guess. And as if that wasn't disappointing enough, I had to go to school the next day and explain to literally everybody, thank you, Mr. Principal, why I wasn't in a Super Bowl commercial like I said I was going to be. My 15 seconds of fame were long over, okay? I flew too close to the sun, but that's not even the worst of it. Even with how small of a role I played in all of this and how I was never on during the Super Bowl like I thought I was gonna be, I got to represent North Dakota, my favorite state, baby, in a national campaign to sell reasonably priced sandwiches, and damn it, I take pride in that. But recently, when I went back to watch the video, after having not seen it in, what, seven or eight years, something took the wind out of my sails very quickly. At the very end of the video, this happens. <laughs> Son of a bitch. If you're unfamiliar, this is Jared Fogle, better known as Jared from Subway, or as I like to call him, the literal embodiment of evil. Go ahead and Google his name if you haven't heard, but the tame version of it is, he's in prison now for stuff involving kids. How the f am I supposed to be proud of being in Subs Across America now? I can't send this video to people anymore. I can't brag about being in this, 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 this monstrosity. Yeah, it's all fun and games until the beady-eyed demon shows up and all of a sudden this aged like milk. <laughs> no, no, no. Stay where you are, nobody come out. Subway went ahead and unlisted the video on their YouTube channel because obviously they cut ties with anything involving Jared after he went to prison. They turned off comments too, understandably. At the risk of me sounding incredibly selfish, this man single-handedly ruined one of my go-to interesting facts about myself during group introductions. Thanks a lot, you disgusting wet gym sock of a human being. Really the only documented wholesomeness left surrounding this entire thing online is on Subway's Facebook page. There's a really old post the day after the video went live on Late Night. They shared the link on there and here are a few of my favorite comments. Absolutely amazing. David, you son of a gun. <laughs> I love most Subway. Oma is extremely honest. I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> 500 points on my Subway reward card today. Yuppie! Yuppie indeed, Zayad. As far as I'm concerned, the only way to make this right is for Subway to make me the new official spokesman of their brand. Move over, Billy Belichick. There's a new sheriff in town, and his name is Scotty Salami. Hey, is that a foot-long Italian herbs and cheese in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? So anywho, that's the story of the time I was in a very unfortunate Super Bowl ad without technically actually being in a Super Bowl ad. I hope you enjoyed it. I put the link to the full Subs Across America video in the description if you want to check it out. Um, f Jared Fogle, but he's not benefiting from you watching that in any way. He is in prison, so don't worry about that. You're in no way supporting Jared. Just check out your boy. I've also been posting sketches to my second channel, Scott is Struggling, and we're having an absolute romp over there. New videos twice a week on that channel. Can you believe it? And I post new videos to this channel all the time, so if you want to support me and see my videos before they get ripped off by someone else, I would really appreciate that. Okay, anyway, just another reminder, delete your social media accounts. You don't need Twitter. You don't need TikTok. Thank you so much to my lovely patrons. Those that are listed here are in the top tier on there. I don't even know what to say. You guys are so great. I appreciate the support so much. That is all I've got for you this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making this one. I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.